What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Thank y'all so much for being here. We are on day 95 of this 100 Days to Brave Daily Devo journey. And so it is completely crazy to me. I know I say it every single time, but we literally only have five days left after today. Oh, I don't know if I'm sad, but there is something that's going to be really cool starting on January 1st, not necessarily within my channel. But um, if you follow Annie F. Downs on Instagram, she posted today about 100 Days to Brave 2020. And so they are actually going to start the book on um, January 1st. And so maybe you're just kind of catching along and you haven't really gone through the whole thing. I highly suggest get this book and do that book club study with them. I may actually go back and do it again, just kind of not on here um, and just kind of delve a little bit deeper into each day and kind of just go through the book again because it has been that amazing. So today though, we are talking about someplace far away that probably most of us have not ever been to. Um, but I don't know about you, but it's somewhere I definitely want to go. I'm not talking about heaven, even though that would be amazing. Um, but it is something that, um, uh, would be a really cool place to visit. So let's go ahead and pray and we'll jump right in. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you, Father, and thank you so much for all your many blessings, Lord. I just ask, Father, that you be in this time of study, be with all those out watching this video, Lord, and just I ask that you bless them in a special way. We just love you and we thank you, and it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. So today we are talking about the one place in the God's Word that He specifically asked us to pray for, okay? You know, we're going to be praying about over the past few days we've talked about praying you know and being brave in our home and our neighborhood our city our country the world but the one place that God specifically asked us to pray for is Jerusalem and so that's what we are actually talking about today um it's probably going to be a shorter video just because we are actually heading out again to our think I think maybe no it's probably not we actually probably have one more Christmas after this if you didn't know if you're not going through this with us um in time and the same time that I'm doing these videos. Uh, yesterday was Christmas, so today's the 26th of December. And yeah, so we have one tonight, and then we'll probably have one this weekend at some point. We've got some family coming in from out of town. So tonight's kind of like a Friendsmas with some friends of our family that we've grown up with. So we're going back to my pam my parents' house and having Christmas with some friends and that we consider family. So um Anyways, so we are in, we're going to be in Psalm. Let's go ahead and get our verse out of the way before I forget it, like I haven't done once before. Um, so we're going to be in Psalm. It's Psalm 122, verses 6 through 7. So Psalm 122, verses 6 through 7, and it says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. So it starts off the whole verse with, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, right? And she said she's actually been to Jerusalem and been there twice and she talks about how much she loves it and how it's got the cobblestone streets and it's the old and the new and how you just feel really cool and special and like something really awesome is going on. Bless, I mean, Jesus walked through Jerusalem. Jesus was there in when he was in human flesh. Jesus was there. So that is just what's just really crazy and cool. Um, and so, you know, she talks about how God tells us all throughout the Bible about Jerusalem and how that was the hub of the Jewish culture and kind of just the center for Jewish life. It was in the whole, you know, he calls it the Holy Land, all these different things. And even in, she talks here about Genesis 12, God promised blessings on those who bless Israel and curses on those who curse her. And so that is, um, kind of just stresses a little bit right there at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis, how important Jerusalem is. And she said, Jerusalem is prophesied, prophesied to be the center of Christ's return in Acts 1 11. And so I was actually going to read that and I meant to already have it marked and I didn't, but we can flip over there real quick. I'm already in Acts. So in Acts 1 11, so let's see, it says, where's that? They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way that you have seen him going into heaven. So, basically it's saying there, he's going to go the same way. He's going to go in the same place that, he's going to come back into the same place that he went. And then it's also in Zechariah 14.4. And I may not be able to get to that one as quickly. But, um, yeah, we can get over there. 
Zechariah 14.4 is also where it says that Jerusalem is going to be where the Lord comes back to. And so it's just really crazy when we think about um, how much he stresses Jerusalem. And I think if you're like me, you kind of get caught up in the fact that Jerusalem is Old Testament life. You don't really, it's where God was, where Jesus walked, you know, all these kinds of things. But you don't really think about the meanings that it could have for us as Christians today. But, I mean, I'm going to be honest for you guys. I don't know that I've necessarily ever thought about praying for Jerusalem until reading this study. And so, um, reading this and, like, that sticking out to me and being like, oh, maybe we should. And, she, I mean, she specifically says Jerusalem is the only city God specifically asked us to pray for. So, the other verse where it talks about him coming back there is Zechariah 14.4. And that says... On, the, on that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. The Mount of Olives will be split in half from east to west, forming a huge valley so that half the mountain will move to the north and half the south. And so that's talking about when the Lord comes back. When it, he establishes his kingdom, he's going to be on the Mount of Olives, which is in Jerusalem, y'all. So she said, prayer is our most direct connection to God. And we've talked way back in the beginning of this hundred days, how much we forsake that connection, how much we overlook that connection. But there are so many things out there that we are like, just, I think, fighting the world for, whether it's something you're struggling or dealing with in your life or something that your family is dealing with or something that a friend of yours is dealing with. And we just forsake the ability to be able to go directly to God and pray for him to help us through this situation. And I know I've battled something today. And I know exactly that I should have been going to God about it. And I'll be honest with y'all. I still haven't. And I feel horrible because I just admitted that. But it's true. And that's just being open and real and raw with you guys. She said, your voice. To, oh, wait. Prayer is our most direct connection to God. Your voice to his ear. And then she's like, you know, I don't know how it works. I don't know. I don't think it's meant for us to know how prayer works and how and when and where and what God's going to do with those prayers. Does he answer them? Yes. He hears every single one, and I think in his way, he answers every single one. I do firmly, fully, 100% believe that we may not know, we may not ever know what some of the answers are to some of the prayers that we've prayed. I believe that. I believe there will come a day where somebody down the road will look back and we will have prayed for something and a situation would have happened that would have caused that God took control of because it's something we prayed about that we may not even know happened because we were gone, we weren't around, whatever. And I think that there will be times we have prayed for things that we won't even ever know how God answered them. Will he have answered them? Yes. But we won't know. There will be other things that there's, you know, we'll be able to look back in our life and be like, oh my God. At the time, God, that killed me, and I was so confused as to why you did that. But now I firmly and fully understand why you did what you did and why you answered it that way. She And just like she said here, we have talked about the power of prayer, and y'all, it is real. Prayer changes things. And you may think, oh, I'm just one person. Yeah, but when one of us and all of us get together and we all pray, like if we're all praying for Jerusalem and we're all praying for each other, every single time when I do these videos, if you've listened to my prayer, sometimes it can get very monotonous and the same, but I do every single time I say, Lord, just please bless everybody watching this video. Be with everybody watching this video because there's going to be different people, but I want it to say every single time because I want him to watch over and bless each one of you guys. And if we all come together and we're all praying for one another and no matter what it is, God's going to hear those prayers. He's gonna, I mean, you can do a blanket prayer. You can do it specifically, but add Jerusalem to your prayer list. And she was like, when you pray for places like your home, your neighborhood, your city, your country, and the world, add Jerusalem. Pray for it. Pray for the bravery of all those people being persecuted for their beliefs, whether it's here within, you know, whether it's within your home, your city, your neighborhood, your country, wherever it is, whether you, maybe you're watching and you are in Jerusalem. I don't know. That would be completely cool. Um, but I hate not that you're, if you were being persecuted, but just if you were somewhere other than the United States, um, but just know that we're praying for you. And if you need prayer, comment down below. Post on Instagram, direct message me, whatever you need to do. I will pray for you. 
I can promise you that. And so her Be Brave call to action says, add Jerusalem to your list of prayers. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And then she adds something above that that's not really in her call to action, but it says, pray for a revival. Pray for a revival in this world. We need it. We need it bad. Jerusalem needs it. All, all of us need it. But add Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So add that to your prayer list tonight, guys. So tomorrow we actually start a new section. Um, and it's our last section. I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, like, like we only have this much left, y'all. We've done all this. Oh my goodness, that's crazy to me. But, all right, you guys, we are going to go ahead and wrap this video up for tonight. Thank y'all so much for watching. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've always, always, always learned from this. It's so good when you put this book with this book. It's so awesome. They're so awesome together. Love them. All right, y'all, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you do enjoy these videos and you enjoy, enjoy, let me get that out, watching anything I throw out there at you, then definitely please subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And then also definitely, if you want to, you can click that little bell. It'll give you an email notification anytime I post new videos. Then definitely give this video a big thumbs up. If you liked what you saw, I'd greatly appreciate that as well. It'd make me smile. Um, but y'all have a wonderful rest of your evening, and I will definitely see y'all right back here tomorrow. Bye, y'all.